Um, testing has really become a sensitive uh, situation in the UK. Thousands of tests ordered last spring turned out to be flawed. How well does your machine hold up under scrutiny? Well, I think that um, one of the uh, key key advantages of, of the test is almost um, it was a solution before the corona problem existed. Um, I've always been keen on, on bringing sort of genetics, standard genetics into the consumer world. And so for years, you know, we've been looking at miniaturization, demystifying the sort of whole field of early detection and prevention. And we invented a cartridge effectively. And this cartridge has an entire laboratory inside. And this has been working and it's been working in the field of, of genetics, looking at things like risks for diabetes, risks for hypertension, cholesterol, things actually that are nutrition related, which we know is also epidemic. So when it came to uh, repurposing it for COVID, it was almost a marriage in heaven because it was, it, was, it was so, so simple compared to what we'd been doing before. Before it was looking for genetic errors, very small differences in our human DNA, where where it came to looking at um, the RNA of the virus, it was almost binary. You've either got it or you haven't. And so we were able to miniaturize all the chemistry, all the detection technology, mm. so you could go directly from a swab to a cartridge like this. So very, very <laughs> accurate um, uh, because it it's looks been demonstrated before. Yeah. It looks, I mean, it's, it looks fantastic. I have to say we're all impressed by the size of it and who doesn't love gadgets. But when I hear <laughs> um, those three letters, DNA, you know, my Jason Bourne antennas start to uh, shoot up and I worry about, you know, governments having too much information on me. What if I need to get off the grid someday? I mean, especially here in Germany where people are so privacy oriented. How do you get around those privacy concerns, Christopher? Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. And this is one of the reasons we brought the lab to the cartridge rather than sending your swab off to a lab. So, you know, the traditional method is you take a swab, take a saliva, and you send it off to a laboratory. You don't know what's happening to your DNA. Um, they could be, these, these companies, there are many companies, direct-to-consumer companies that could be selling your DNA off, as you say. They could be looking for, for information, important information. Whereas with this technology, you do the swab in, it goes straight into the cartridge. The cartridge then will analyze your DNA and this gets disposed of. So effectively, it's all done in situ. So there's no laboratory, you don't send anything off to a lab and your DNA is disposed of. So there's no genetic material. And the only thing that gets sent to either a consumer in the retail world or to the hospital now for the coronavirus test is your result. It's the results of the genetic information that are important, not the genetic information. And that's the key differentiator between our technology and others that are on the market in the sort of consumer world. I mean, obviously, we're not looking at DNA in the viral world. We're looking at RNA, which is very, very different. Christopher, given, and thank you for showing us exactly how this device works, given how tiny it is, it's not as cumbersome, I think, as many people would expect. Can you see this rolling out in more than just hospitals? Will this be, you know, a feature at businesses or airports? Yeah, so, so I mean, the use case of this um, is really near patient. The whole, the whole point is decentralization. You know, and, and it's taken something like the coronavirus to sort of bulldoze the sort of healthcare system, if you like, so that things don't have to always be operated in central labs. You know, tests like this are so important. So effectively, you can get the result as fast as you possibly can without the throughput. So therefore, you know, sure, you can go to spoke areas, not just sort of big wards. You can go into sort of care homes. We're thinking now of going into schools. So even school teachers can operate the, the device. You saw how simple it was. So there's nothing complicated about it. You can eventually go into emergency services, then into the sort of consumer world, as we mentioned earlier. So, so I think the um, utility of the technology and the fact that you've got no pipetting or white coats or big laboratory equipment because we've miniaturized it all makes it 
perfect for that sort of direct to consumer mm. type application. Yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. I was thinking about flying to Spain in a couple of weeks. Not sure if I want to because the health minister here has said anyone who comes back from there has to take a mandatory test. This would, of course, make it so much more convenient. Have you got um, enough funding to scale up? Because it seems like you could scale way up with something like this right now. Yes. So, um, as, 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 you, as you mentioned at the start, I mean, we were a sort of consumer technology business, really trying to bring demystifying genetics and bringing it into the consumer world in a very friendly way. And it's to do with diet and nudging people to eat better based upon their DNA. And, and that's how we began. And that, that, that's been going quite well. We've raised we've raised a series A money and we've, we've established a business. But now we're effectively trying to scale innovation at the speed of light. And, and, and so we're confronted with this sort of bulldozer now <laughs> of a business which we've got to manage. It's almost that, that we've bulldozed the healthcare system with something that um, was unusual for them. And now we're sort of mopping mm. up and trying to get into that environment. So, so the funding you know, will take us to a point where we can get some very, very early revenues. But obviously, we're selling to the NHS at cost. This is not a big money-making exercise for the business. But the private sector is queuing up as a result of the publicity we've been getting. And that's where we can start mm. making margins. And I think, therefore, um, you know, sort of investment should hopefully come quite naturally as we start building up into the private sector.